Well, in this video, I want to demonstrate <coughs> um, the what we attempted in class today, and my apologies to those of you that uh, were overwhelmed by it. Uh, but I want to take our data sets. I'll demonstrate again how to get our data sets from the uh, NCBI GEO. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll use another approach to uh, generate a gene list, but you'll need a gene list. Uh, so there's three data tables that we want to pull into Microsoft Access. I have that open here. <clears throat> we are going to want to pull in our uh, gene annotation table. It'll be a file that starts with GPL that we download from uh, <clears throat> uh, NCBI GEO. It's a platform, that's the PL. And then we'll have the actual uh, transcriptomes, the GSE file, uh, the data sets, and then <clears throat> with the samples. And then we'll have this third table, the uh, gene table. So what we want to do is use that gene table to extract information from the uh, transcriptome data sets. But you'll see as we proceed uh, that we need the um, <clears throat> the gene annotation table to do this. Let's start first. I've got um, access on my screen recorder, access and Excel open. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, the window's back here. Uh, so I can bounce back and forth. So if you get all three of those open, it should be good to go. With Microsoft Access, what first comes up by default is a blank database. Over here on the right, you can click on a folder. Um, I'm just going to send mine to the desktop. I left it as the default name that showed that popped up here. You can name it whatever you want, and then you click Create. Okay, so we now have our database. Now we need our, our uh, files from NCBI GEO. So NCBI GEO. <clears throat> and here we go. And I'm going to use uh, glioblastoma that I've searched before. Now what we discovered in class today is it'll be important with your first trials, rather than just go look for something that you want, you want to make sure uh, that the platform, so here's the platform, so I've selected this from the search, here's the platform, I'm going to open that in a new tab so I can go back and forth. And then here's the reference series where we get table 2, the data set. Okay, so the GP file, GPL, is going to be our gene annotation table. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, the GSE is going to be our data table, right? There's samples in it. So you'll see those when we get them. So I'm now just going to right-click that and take that to a new tab. Did I already do that? Anyway, so here we come. This is the gene annotation table. You see the GPL 570, right? You scroll down. If there's an experiment that you want to look for, look here under the series. There's 3,000 experiments that use this one. So the reason that we want this one is uh, what we're looking for uh, in our gene list we've created is the gene symbols. So make sure that you have a column, gene symbols, because this is what will match. <clears throat> Our gene list will match this, and then the data tables that we download will have only this and not the, the genes. So in our, in our uh, database, we'll be kind of linking those together in our query, as you'll see. Okay, so I download this full table. There's uh, my first one, and I'll open that in Excel and change it a little bit and then save it. Okay. So um, that went into my download folder. So I'm going to show in the folder. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is uh, take it to my desktop just to be, so I right clicked on it. It's a big one. And I'm, you can copy, I'm going to cut and then take it to my desktop. Down here and paste so <clears throat> okay now we come back geo ascension viewer and then here's our study okay 
There's the GPL, that's the platform that was used. There are 92 samples in this particular study. I can capture all of them uh, with this series matrix. But before doing that, I'm just going to click on one of the samples. So you see, and you scroll down, and you see here's the ID ref and the value. That's it. That's what's in the table. And it's a log 2 uh, GC RMA signal intensity is what they used. Okay, so let me go back. Now I'm just going to get this series matrix. It's going to be downloaded as a zip file. See the dot GZ at the end of it. Okay. Now, uh, once this is downloaded, it's a, it's a big one, 20 megabytes. So these are big files, so you've got to be careful how you're handling them. Still flashing, now it's ready. Okay, show in the folder, and I'm just going to right click on it. You see, mine shows the GZ file over here. I have a uh, uh, an expander. You just need to open it up and see what expander you have. In class, it was file zip, I think. But anyway, there should be an expander. Um, and you use that. Typically those will ask you to select what you want to expand. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. So these are all kind of the same. You select what you want. I'm going to expand or extract. It doesn't really matter. This one just lets me uh, select my desktop where I want to send it and it's working on it and what I'm going to do is I'll sh uh, okay we're all done so now I can close this I can close that folder because I don't need that anymore and I can minimize my browser I'll just leave it there now I'm going to go to Excel and I'll do a file, open. I'm going to look at my desktop. And I need to go to all files. I'll do text files and I'll just show those rather than everything on my desktop to you. OK. So this is the, um, the gene annotation table. So 58 megabytes. And you go through this. It's tab delimited. OK. A little preview window down here. It's tab delimited. I don't need to change anything. Next kind of shows me what's going to happen. You can scroll down and scroll over to see what it's going to look like if you want. But um, column data format is general. And we click finish and then here it comes. So what we're going to do next is um, do a file save as. I'm going to save it. Uh, when you do this with the text file, if you say yes, it'll save it as a text file. If you say no, then it wants to save it as a workbook. And I'm still going to my desktop. The, the first one I like to call original. Because <clears throat> then if I delete a bunch of stuff for the database and I need it, I can come back here and get it. You still have the text file too and things like that. It's just a style of doing it. So I selected all the rows by clicking on the number, holding down my left button and selecting all that. <clears throat> I could have clicked there, held the shift button, gone to 16 and then clicked and it would have got everything in between. Anyway, and then use the right click delete and that shifts everything up. So our first row is our column header. This is pretty important for the database system. All I need is the gene title and the gene symbol. So I'm going to select all the other columns right click and delete. Um, I like to have my gene symbol in the B column. I don't know. So I right click, select the column, right click, cut, and then right click, select column B, right click, insert, cut. It shifts everything over. And then I get here, <clears throat> and then you can go across. I just go really far, <clears throat> make sure I get everything. Hit delete, and now we've just got three columns in this. I'm going to do a file save as. So I got a gene symbol in here. If your gene annotation database, uh, gene annotation table doesn't have a gene symbol column and you have your gene list is gene symbols, nothing's going to match in your database to pull anything out. So I'll do a file save as. 
and I'm just going to change it to a DB on the end. <clears throat> when I go looking for files to bring them into the Microsoft Access, it's nice to know that that's there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just make a gene list. Okay, copy. I just selected some gene symbols and the gene symbol thing there. All I need is uh, a new file to put that in there. Paste, file, save as. It's going to be Excel. I'm going to the desktop. Gene list. <clears throat> okay, so that table is done. I'm going to close that table. My gene annotation table is done. I'm going to close that. Now I need my. Uh, <clears throat> desktop. I need my GSE. That came down as a text, so it's the same thing. Delimited, tab. I know what it is. I can just click finish. As long as you haven't changed the settings on there. Now somebody in class said that you can just drag and drop your file or something like that. I haven't made it work yet, but anyway. So again, we got to get down to the, the headers. Here it is, the ID ref. Right click, delete. That shifts everything to the top. <clears throat> there we are. File, save as, not a tab delimited. I want an Excel workbook. <clears throat> uh, I could have done original and then a, a, a DB. But I'm just going to put the DB here. <clears throat> That's a big one. Taking a little while. You notice this down over here. If you get in trouble, it says press escape to cancel. That works pretty good. Okay, now I think this is my access here. So here's access. We created the file. Now what we want to do is go to external data, bring in the Excel file, browse, desktop. I'll bring in my gene annotation table first. <clears throat> It's long, a lot of rows. Now make sure that this is clicked, right? We got our headers in the first row. Okay. If you don't do that, then it messes things up. That's good. That's good. We want the, to assign the ID number. Notice this is our ID ref, uh, ID 1, <clears throat> because there's already an ID there, so just numbers it again. Uh, those numbers are, are helpful. Um, Next step is to name it. It's the GPL, so I'll know what it is. You can name it whatever you want. Um, this is your database. Okay, that's one. I'm going to get my gene list second since that's short. Only one worksheet. If you had something on the number two and you wanted that, that's where you'd tell it. Get, make sure that first row is your header. Then it's going to put the ID in there. I'm just going to finish. So I called it sheet one. I can come over here, rename it. <clears throat> you can always rename over here. Bring in one more. Only got a couple minutes left. <clears throat> uh, and then our matrix open. Okay. I may have to do one more. So it's recognizing that. And I, I know what it's going to do. Just pull it in. <clears throat> I might just have enough time to show you, depending on how fast this is. I'll have to do another recording, I think, to show you how to do the query. But you can do this, stop it, slow it down, and do whatever you need uh, to uh, create your database. <clears throat> and then I'll uh, take you through this part and even do an analysis uh, for you for the next recording. Okay. You can stop watching now if you want. There we are. We're done. So what we're going to do next, if you're still watching, is we're going to go to Create. And then we're going to go to Query Design. And this is where we'll add our tables. Uh, we don't need Table 1. I'll add the gene list. My uh, annotation table. And this. Close. Now we're going to go gene symbol to gene symbol. I'll do it again in the next one. This. I'm going to select. I want to put uh, my gene symbol, gene title, and then you select um, 
all of them. Uh, drag and drop. 